Stop them, and then the undead humans or aliens or whatever they were, they were on the other side of the field. Yeah, mind controlled or something. Whatever. Uh. Um, <laughs> I like the way Wasaga does their big games. Yeah. There's um drop things, so core material. Stations. Um, there's water bottles spread out around the field with colored liquid, so you can't just give them a thing. But you get you have to get the water bottles, and then have two big jugs out front at the main staging area, and Whatever team gets the most water bottles by the end of the day and fills up their thing wins. So unfortunately, the aliens won. They filled up their thing and then all they had to do was take a big box from the staging area to a certain building in the game. And they did that pretty easily since yeah, a team bunch team of our <laughs> players left. Yeah. Uh, halfway through the day, <laughs> it started to cloud over and sprinkle a little bit. Next thing you know, it's complete downpour and lightning storm and everything. And they had to pause the game for a bit. Yeah, man, a bunch of humans left, so uh, we were like a lot of medics. team. A lot of our medics left. Yeah, so, we so me and him actually had to become medics for the uh, second half of the game. I ran out of paint, so I was proud to be a medic. I just ran out with no pack or anything, just brought a microfiber cloth and just slapped people across the face if they were hit. So, yeah. So, that's they won. That was it. Um, amazing time. Uh, got to play along Les Stroud, Survivor Man. You ever watch him on TV? He's actually pretty good. He, uh, I didn't know this, but he's really into paintball. He's got a field at his house. He's been playing since, like, 1985 when they first <laughs> used just, like, the little goggles and everything. So, he was there. It was cool. To, he was on our team, so it was kind of cool to play alongside him and, uh, see him out there. Um... Then, throughout the day, oh, actually, another thing. We were standing there in the staging area at one point, and I had to undo my air tank to, uh... <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, this isn't funny whatsoever. <laughs> some took off my air tank, set it on the counter, and I was sitting there doing something. Some kid sets his little, like, rich little 13-year-old kid sets his axe down on the table, and then he gets to go up and go, and he turns, smashes my tank right off the counter. As I turn around, it just smashes on the floor, landing almost right straight down on the reg and so I just like turned around freaked out on him a bit <laughs> I looked at it I was like no way so but I stuck it on my gun it didn't leak any air so it was fine that way and then went over to the chrono shot it still works fine unfortunately though oh, I got some money from the kid like all he had was 10 bucks so I was like dude I'm taking it I have to fix my <laughs> reg but I get home go to try out my gun again after I clean it Shooting works fine. I'm going to take it off, and what do you know? The rag is unscrewing from the tank. So I don't know if the if falling jarred it or whatnot, but it's screwed. I'm still sitting on my gun at home right now. I got to go put Loctite on it and <laughs> find a really skinny wrench in order to get that off. Um, they also had a big when the, last year they had them all outside all the vendors, but this year they yeah. kind of had like a trade show and they put it on their inside field. They cleaned it up set up tents inside and vendors were all in there um, the, they had a lot of vendors this year they had full clip original SWAT they make like um, boots. boots for like uh, Montreal um, police force and the Montreal SWAT team and stuff they're actually legit yeah tactical really boots light. they're like the lightest boot I've ever seen like you look at it, it looks like kind of like a steel toed heavy boot but the thing weighs as much as my running shoes um, Key was there they were uh, fixing guns funny enough a lot of the key guns like Empire and BT weren't breaking. They're mostly fixing other types of guns. Tipman was there. Underground Products and Vulcan. Now, when we got there, we were looking around the underground because we're sponsored. Well, semi. Technically, <laughs> they gave us a sponsorship, but nothing's really come through yet with them till now. But we were standing there and we started talking to a guy there, and next we found out he's part owner of Underground Products, which is Vulcan Canada, right? So. We kind of firmed up our uh, sponsorship with them. We picked up some swag, represent, and um, yeah, got some uh, cool little uh, HPR grips. Um, yeah, they're actually really cool. Come in a whole bunch of different colors, only like ten bucks. They just go on the front grip. Um, they're actually useful too. I thought I was just bought it because it looks cool, but. Um, yeah, it actually adds grip and stuff for uh, when you're not wearing gloves. Um, I lost a glove. Um, 
in the game I found it later, but um, so I had to play with no gloves and it was it was good. My hands were all slippery from the rain, but um, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I just wanted to because I seen the just pretty much just came out. I seen them on uh, I think Anne's there, and uh, so I was like, oh, and then I seen them at uh, the yeah. event Heroes, and they also at the Underground Products tent, and we picked up some of those. Um, Luke got his remote coil. Yeah, I, a good deal on that. I actually want to talk about this uh, just real quick. Um, I thought it was just like a normal remote coil. I thought it would be kind of like a little bit of a lower end one since VTAC's pretty new. Um, VTAC being Vulcan's uh, tactical um, segment, but it actually works really well, uh, as you'll see in the video, the shooting video we're gonna put up. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's really nice. It it has this cool little feature. I don't know if all of them have it. I don't use these, but you can just unhook the quick little uh, reg thing, little quick release. And uh, if you don't want to carry around uh, your gun, you can just put it down and just uh, do whatever. <laughs> I've seen some kid walking across the uh, staging area, and he's got hooked on a table and came off, and you're spraying air. <laughs> uh, some curse words came out of his mouth. <laughs> so yeah, this was a uh, was it was pretty cheap. It was cheaper than they were selling at the pro shop, so I thought I'd take it. Um. Les Stroud out of booth. I didn't know he has CDs. Yeah. Playing his harmonica, videos, pictures, autographs, anything, books. Um, Wolf had a tent with all his guns, and he gave it. He had a giveaway actually. Uh, Empire Tracer pump it. gun. Uh, we were busy on the field while they Making. gave it away. So, Cat Shack was there too. He didn't have a booth, but he's walking around the field taking pictures. Um, Interviews. We're gonna watch some of his videos later because I seen them on there, and I thought he was he was. Near me at one point, so I see. Hopefully, I'm in some video or footage. Some random guy was also there in the vendor area selling knives. Yeah, he had a whole bunch. So we were like, okay, <laughs> they're not really paintball like, but um, Cobra Line. Not many people maybe have heard of them, but they're a uh, new company that makes like remote coils. They're slightly different, and they have a few different products out. Um, Tech BB had a uh, table there, and they had a tribute to Borg, which a lot of you know. He's passed away. He uh, took his own life, unfortunately, and um, but they had uh, like a flag there and <laughs> other stuff, flag. Croatian flag and all that other stuff. Also, a neat thing they had is uh, they had uh, wires, and you could sell your own stuff. You just set it on the table, write on a piece of paper what you want for it, what is all involved, maybe your phone number or something, so they could text you, and you just tie it there to the table, and you can try to sell it. Um, yeah. I tried to sell my Tipman, no one bit, but <laughs> it was um, alright. Luke got uh, yeah. quite a deal though, so I'll let you talk about that. Um, as most of you probably know, I had a Kingman Training Eraser pistol. Um, I went and I bought um, a whole 500 uh, canister of 11mm uh, paintballs, and I was going to use it on the big day, um, being a medic or something, and I had my holster, I had a whole bunch of clips, I had uh, all the whatever canisters of CO2. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I should try and sell it since it's the day before. This was on Friday. And uh, so, I, so I put it at the table. And I uh, put an offer or a price of like 120 or something like that. But uh, as I was writing down uh, the stuff on it, some other guy who had been uh, kind of lurking around the table trying to sell his BT, uh, BT Delta Elite, I think it's called, uh, electric uh, uh, Milsim gun. And uh, he was like, wow, I really want a pistol, so uh, I'll just do a straight-up trade with you. And uh, I didn't want to sound too, uh, too eager about it. But I was like, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, yeah, okay, sure, I'll take it. So uh, this guy gave me a $400 gun for like a $120 value of clips and <laughs> pistol and stuff. So uh, it came with a uh, rip clip, obviously, which... As a pain, um, comes with uh, everything, you know. It's missing the shroud and the apex tip on it, but um, whatever. Uh, it's, it's not like I'm gonna use it that much. Maybe sell it. Um, clip. That's pretty cool. I don't know. I never had one of these kind of guns, so it's it's cool. I like the stock too. Um, yeah, apparently it's got full auto semi and ramping. Um, double trigger on it um, so I don't know if it'll actually be able to shoot that fast so yeah that's a good deal and we're gonna do a shooting or we'll just show you the a video shooting it out we still haven't tried it out yet so we don't even know if it's actually a good deal if it works or not yeah so uh, 
the macro line's frayed a little bit on it, so it, I actually scratched myself a couple times. But, so yeah. that'll be at the end of this video here. And uh,